I've been thinking quite a lot about um, soapy perfumes. And when I hear people talk about soapy perfumes, um, I often think that to me, they're not very soapy because I think when I think of soap, I think of bar soaps, so creamy soap, um, rather than shampoo. I kind of think of shampoo-y fragrances to be a very different type of smell to, to bar soap style smells. And it, the same with kind of laundry and detergent soap smells, you know. And I absolutely love all the videos on YouTube about the soapy smells and some of them I always agree with because I think they are bar soapy and then others I think because they the people uh, reviewers and um youtubers tend to block them together in terms of like this is a lovely clean scent this one smells like a bar soap this one smells like a shampoo this one smells like laundry detergent um so I thought it might be fun to have a real think about my perfumes and specifically the ones that I like because in hindsight, they smell like bar soaps to me, like creamy, creamy bar soaps. Um, and obviously I've mentioned Noah before, I've mentioned a few that I think are quite bar soapy, but I have also come to realise that a lot of the musky perfumes I like, I like them because they are soapy. They are a soapy kind of musk that I just think is um, really comforting, really creamy, just really just, it smells clean to me, but not in a kind of, clinical or um laundry kind of way not in a harsh way like in a really really gentle and soft way so i've uh, got nine perfumes in this list and i hope that there will be some that you haven't heard of before or some that you might want to try and i hope that this video will be uh useful so the first one unsurprisingly is noah and this won't come as a surprise to anyone who has already watched some of my videos or possibly lots of people who have watched videos about soapy perfumes because this is very famously a soapy perfume um, but I wanted to be a bit more specific about this one before I do anything else I'll read the notes really quickly so the notes in Noah the top notes are white musk peony freesia green notes peach and plum and I would argue you don't really get much peach it's not really very fruity, so if you're worried about it being fruity, you don't have to. It's all incredibly well blended um, and you can't necessarily notice a, a lot of these notes specifically on their own. The middle notes, lily, lily of the valley, green grass, jasmine, ylang ylang, rose. Base notes are coffee, vanilla, coriander, sandalwood, incense, tonka bean and cedar. And this one, to me has especially when it's on your skin it has a slight element of a kind of latte like a really creamy very milky latte because you can definitely sense the coffee in it it's one of the things I like the most about it it has it's subtle but it's definitely there so this is almost a kind of a slightly sweet latte um flavored bar of soap I would say it is very comforting it's quite well like it, it lasts quite well actually this one um it's very clean smelling but it's really warm smelling really cr very very creamy it's a very very lovely perfume and I think it's really easy to wear if you don't like creamy perfumes if you don't like creamy musks if you don't like musky perfumes then you know you probably won't like it but then you wouldn't be looking for bar soap style perfumes and you wouldn't have found this video if you didn't like those so Noah I think is a really safe bet and it's also really affordable you can get one of these for under 30 pounds um so yeah that's the first one and I, I think that's a, a really really safe bet for anyone who likes a bar soap and it's absolutely delicious it makes me smell delicious and I love it so that's that one mm. So next up, um, I haven't spoken about this one on my channel yet, but it is, it basically has become my signature scent since I got it, because this is the one that I sort of crave wearing the most, and I think you can wear it in any season. So this is Ceruti 1881, and it is absolutely spectacular this is a perfume that is really magical um but it very much relies on touching your skin because of the musk in it it does something really special and it kind of you can spray it on a card i do have it on a card 
but I know what this one smells like anyway. You can spray it on a card and you can kind of get a bit of a feel for it, but definitely the heat of your skin um, turns this into something else. So this is um, normally got a round lid on it, but because I got this as a, a tester bottle, um, this particular bottle doesn't have um, a lid, but normally it would have Ceruti written on here and a nice kind of shiny, sort of slightly rose goldy lid. Um, so this is a flowery soap. It's also very powdery, so I'm probably going to do a powdery perfume and this will pop up in that one as well because it's, it doubles up. I'll read you the notes for this one. So Ceruti 1881. Mimosa, Iris, Rose, Freesia, Violet, Lily of the Valley, Jasmine and Bergamot. Those are the top notes. This is a 90s perfume, so it's the same as Noah actually. And they do tend to have a lot of notes. Um, and if they're, as most of them are, very well blended, <laughs> it's quite hard to pick certain ones out. But middle notes, Chamomile, Iris, Narcissa, Geranium, Galab uh, Galabnum, I can't say that, I apologise, Coriander, Jasmine, Brazilian, Rosewood, orange blossom, tuberose, musk, sandalwood, cedar, and amber, and vanilla. <sighs> this is such a magnificent perfume. Um, it, it's a, it's one that's very hard to describe, and I think it's one where sometimes you're going to just have to take a jump and just buy buy a bottle and see if you like it. Um, I can tell you from buying them myself that uh, lots of people would buy this if you didn't like it and you wanted to then sell it on because um they the ebay bids on this one is are always go up because i think this one really if you're going to buy it in the shops is going to cost you about 40 pounds but you can definitely get them online for way cheaper than that um just in normal perfume sellers you can get them cheaper than that and this one comes into its own because it's got the powderiness of the mimosa mixed with all the florals and then it's got chamomile which makes it so comforting and beautiful and it has the sandalwood musk uh, and the vanilla actually which obviously I'm a bit fussy about vanilla um, but this one really it's in the dry down it gives it a sweetness that's subtle not massively obvious as vanilla but when it warms up on your skin it is sweet it's really beautiful but it's sweet in a 90s way it's not sweet in a kind of modern massively massively sweet way it's a subtle sweetness and it's it's flowery but it smells like a beautiful comforting flowery soap a powdery lovely soap it's just this one's very hard to describe but i it's it's right up there with some of my absolute favorites that i would highly recommend people try um the the chamomile in this or it just makes it so special and magical and so soothing and also i think that this one is it's hard to describe why but it makes me feel quite sexy this perfume just makes me feel sexy i don't know why i think it's because it makes me feel like i've wrapped myself in something cozy and I can just like cuddle up, you know, that that's kind of the feeling that it gives me, but it's gorgeous. And it lasts for quite a long time. Um, if I spray this on, you know, I can often smell it the next morning. Um, but it's it's hard to overspray it as well because it's it's just it's just a lovely perfume. So that's 1881 by Saruti, and I highly recommend that one. I think it's fabulous. Okay, so next up, let's have a look what's on my lip. Well, I mean obviously. This one was gonna have to, to crop up. This is Oxygen by Lanvin. Oh, and this is magical. This is a milky, clean, sweet bar of soap. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, in hindsight, cause I, I've, done a, I've done a video of this one and I did say, I found it really clean. And I was thinking, oh, maybe this is like dryer sheets, this is like tumble dried uh, linens. And I think in a way that's true. However, in hindsight, yes, I think it smells like a bar soap. I think it smells very, very creamy and soapy in a, but a bright and fresh way. So whereas Noah is kind of creamy in a kind of coffee-ish and bar soapy kind of sweet and lovely way. And this is a flowery kind of bar soap smell. This one is a very, very fresh kind of almost spa-like smell, but it's mixed in with a sweet, milky creaminess that they used to use. Um, 
that just that just has a creamy warm soapy quality about it so the notes in oxygen are indian white pepper bergamot um middle notes milk gardenia and rose base notes musk iris and white sandalwood and i have to say i don't like gardenia when it's very very recognizable um it's very strong or when it's with certain other notes so if it's gardenia and it's really buttery it's going to freak me out if it's gardenia but it's then very crisp and like cold and with white musk particularly i i, I don't really like it but i have realized that the gar there's gardenia in quite a few of these soapy perfumes and i think if it's mixed in the right way with the right other notes gardenia automatically makes things smell soapy um so i i'm not sure whether you'd smell it and go oh that's a gardenia perfume i really don't think that's the case with all but maybe one of these but i think it gives it such a bar soapy quality that when it's mixed in properly it's really really good so yeah that's lanvin which is just an absolute winner i love that perfume um so next another one another one that i've already done a video on skin musk by perfume decor now I'd say the cologne is not as quite as soapy, um, but just so it holds up because the, the oils are so tiny. I thought I'd just show you, show you the cologne just with a bigger bottle so you can actually see it properly. Um, so Skin Musk is a very pure, sweet, musky, soapy smell. And it definitely is soapy. And it's very difficult to find anything else in it to describe this smell. This is another one where it, it is quite, <laughs> it's quite hard to explain what it smells like. So the notes in this don't, doesn't help too much either because this is musk, sandalwood and floral notes. And <sighs> it is sweet. Definitely it's quite sweet. I don't think it's sweet in a vanilla -y way. Um... I wouldn't entirely know how to describe it. It's kind of slightly sugary. And I don't think I'd even say caramel, but there's definitely something sweet in it. You can definitely smell the sandalwood. It's maybe a very slightly floral, very sweet, slightly sandalwoody, very soapy fragrance. And it's a beautiful musk. I think it's my favourite of all my musks. If I just wanted something that was musky, this is the one that I will wear to bed. Um, I don't wear any other perfumes to bed specifically to wear them to bed. But this one, this is this is good for bed. It's very comforting. It's super cosy. It's really beautiful. But I, I would generally advise you to, to buy the oil. And I do have a whole um, review of this one if you do want to go and listen to that. Because um, I talk about this one for ages because I love it. Okay. So next up. We have one that everyone else talks about all the time, so I really don't need to go much into this. And I've also already done a video. So this is Mont Blanc Signature. And this one, this is basically an orange soap. <laughs> I mean, it's creamy, but it has that nice musk in it that has a slight soapiness to it. So if I can find... Here we go. Oh, yeah, Lang Ylang, there you go. So the the top notes of this are is Clementine. The middle notes are Ylang Ylang uh magnolia and peony base notes vanilla white musk and benzoin so this one this is basically a citrusy style bar soapy smell this this reminds me of some of the bar soaps that you get from lush to be honest um so yeah i obviously a lot of people have talked about this i do think there's something soapy about it which is i think probably one of the reasons i quite like it because I don't normally get very vanilla forward uh, fragrances. I, I'm, I'm not normally keen on those. But I think this one, it's very cool though. It's not like, it's not, it's kind of still fuzzy, a bit powdery, but it's quite cool. Um, it's very, very nice. It's a really nice one. It's quite a subtle, soapy, orangey, orangey and vanilla smell. Um, ooh, I shall have to move these up a bit, otherwise I shan't be able to get anything else in. Um, yeah, let's move these a little bit. <laughs> so next up, mm -hmm. let's go for, ah, well, I also have a video of this one, K2 
Katy Perry's indie. Now, again, I won't go into this one a huge amount because you can go and watch my other video where I, I wax lyrical about this one because I think this is a great perfume. I think it's brilliant. Mm. And this has a huge amount of musk in it and it is exactly the kind of musk that I like, the one that's a bit soapy and it's sweetened. And this one on me, not necessarily on everyone because it might be the musk that's creating this scent. This is a coconut soap to me. A slightly sweetened, creamy coconut soap. So the notes in this, the top notes are plum, white tea, bergamot. Middle notes are white cedar, oh, wheat, sorry, white cedar extract specifically. Lily of the Valley, cyclamen. Base notes are musk, white musk, black musk, Egyptian musk, island musk, tonka bean and amber. So it's very much been designed to be a very musky and mm, sweet and kind of slightly warm perfume. Although this one, this one's kind of halfway between the warm and musks and this cold one. This is like a really nice in between. And you could definitely wear this at any time of year. Any time of year you could wear this or mainly any of these, to be honest, you could wear it any time of year at all. The only one that I think is slightly strong it is is this one i think lambin's probably the one that is the most noticeable and the one that has the most projection but indie is great indie is a lovely lovely perfume that definitely has like a coconut soap vibe about it which i think is brilliant um so next up oh the one that's going to be a real pain a drop to issy by issy miyaki so all of these are relatively affordable. I think probably this is the most expensive one. I think you're looking at £25, £30, £25, about 10 or 15 You can get this little one for 20 This you can get for literally £4, which is madness. Um, this one, I managed to get this for 35 plus, like in a, in a set that had some hand creams. Again, I have a video of this one if you want to see more about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you get a 30 mil now, because they've literally just came come out with a, a flanker of this. So I think it's very possible that this one will become a little bit less expensive quite soon because they're starting to bring out flankers. So, But this is lilac. This is a lilac and almond kind of smell. It's very powdery. This is another one that when I do a powdery, I think this will probably crop up in that as well because it's intensely powdery. However this is definitely also soapy it's very soapy um it doesn't hold itself up which is a bit annoying <laughs> but it's it's a lovely soapy perfume so the notes in this are the top notes are almond milk damask rose uh middle notes lilac solar notes star anise jasmine and orange blossom base notes vanilla musk and broxen and cedar um cedar sattler atlas cedar sorry um yeah, and it's like a lot of that. It's a strong, this one. This is strong. You don't need much of it. It projects quite subtly, but quite well. And the longevity is really good. Um, in fact, I think all of these last pretty well, to be honest. I think they're all quite good. Um, so, yeah, but you have to like lilac. If you don't like lilac, you won't like this one. And if you don't like powdery things, you won't like it very much either. But it's definitely very soapy. And I think that the almond milk in it is what's making it so soapy. But yeah, this is a lilac soap. This is a classic lilac smoke, uh, uh, soap kind of smell. That one. I'm going to try and get it in the frame. <laughs> now, the next two, I think, are very similar. So this is pure. Oh dear, I have to move things around a little bit so I can get them all in. So this is Pure by Alfred Sung. And this one, I think in my video of Noah, I said it was the only one that I thought smelt like a white bar of soap. But actually, again, in hindsight, that's not necessarily true <laughs> because this one smells like a slightly coffee, um, hint of coffee, milky kind of bar soap smell. And pure, pure is, is kind of a, a little bit plainer in a weird way. It's incredibly soapy. Um, so I'm going to actually bring up the other one before I carry on because I think they're quite similar. And again, you know, you, you sometimes realise these things if you wear them um, near each other. 
So this is 212 by Caroline Herrera. Um, this is just a little bottle, but this one I think is quite similar to Pure. So if I put these two down. Oh, this one's going to roll away. That's the problem with 212. It's in a very annoying bottle, a very annoying bottle. <laughs> so let's hold it in place. So Pure. Oh. Yeah, Pure is a slightly more citrusy version, I think, of this. So Pure by Alfred Sung. Firstly, I, I'm not sure if this has been discontinued or not. It seems to be getting increasingly difficult to find. Um, but it's really affordable. Um, I think you can get these for about 15, 20 pounds for 100 mil. Um, and I, I hope they're not discontinued because I know a lot of people really love this. You've probably seen this one in soapy perfumes before because it's very, very white bar soapy. But the notes for this guy um, are tangerine, tagettes, I don't know what they are, they're some kind of beautiful looking flower, orchid, middle notes, lily, pineapple, freesia, peony, gardenia, osmanthus, woody, uh, base notes, woody notes, amber and cinnamon. So from pure, I don't really detect cinnamon, it's probably making it a bit more warm and soapy but I don't really detect it as a note on its own. But I do detect the gardenia in this one, but it's not buttery, it's soapy, it's like creamy soapy. Yeah, but because it's got the tangerine and the pineapple in there, this one I think is just a sort of bright white soap smell. I think this is a, this is, it should be called pure soap. It really should be called pure soap because it's a very, very, very soapy, quite, I mean, it's not simple because it's got all these notes in it that, that just basically make it smell like a really lovely bar soap, but it's a nice clean quite bright lovely soap smell it really is and when you first spray it you definitely get more of the pineapple and the tangerine so you, you get a little bit more of a zingy it's never sharp at all this one it doesn't name anything in it that's super sweet but it definitely is quite sweet it also doesn't say it has musk in it but I well not on Fragrantica anyway but this to me smells real I mean it like all the others it really does smell like there's musk in there it smells like there's gardenia musk and something to sweeten it up because it is quite sweet but yeah it's a really really nice one this it's very very good bar soap and then if i get the notes up for 212 so 212 mm, 212 is very similar but it's even more gardenia -y. so if anything this one i think people have compared it to a dove soap um so yeah, this this one, I think, I don't know all of the different names for soaps. I know in America there's very specific smells for certain soaps. But I think these two are the most kind of plain bar soapy smells. But this one, because there's even more gardenia, I think this one takes the kind of Dove Soap Bar um, award. Mm, it's very, very creamy. So this one has top notes of... Orange blossom, cactus flower, bergamot, mandarin orange, middle notes of lily, freesia, gardenia, jasmine, white camilla, lily of the valley, rose, peony, base notes of musk and sandalwood. And yeah, I mean, it's a pure bar soap, absolute bar soap. So if what you want is something that smells like a dove bar of soap, this is a good bet. This has also been around since the 90s um you can still get it this is just a small bottle but normally they're they're even bigger and what they do is they have the silver bit in the center and then they have um <laughs> yes yeah, so silver bits in the center and then they have two different bottles two round bottles that fit into it but this is just a little one um both types are impossible to actually put anywhere it's a bit annoying um so yeah so this one i think is the purest white soap and this one is a slightly fresher, more summery um, white soap, I think. So, yeah, I mean, that I think any of these are going to be a good option. I'm just going to try and <laughs> create a little kind of... <laughs> Let's see if you can actually see all those. Good. <laughs> so you've got, if I go through them, you have the, <laughs> the Pure Dove Soap. The coffee sort of latte creamy soap you've got the um, lilac soap 
you've got the more kind of tangy white bar soap, the kind of really fresh and clean one. It smells cleaner than this one, that's what it is. The coconut uh, bar soap, the citrusy orange bar soap. You've got, um, I mean, this is this, uh, like a sweet, maybe slightly caramelised bar soap. I don't really know how to describe this one, but it's perfect. A very sort of beautiful, fresh, clean spa, really fancy smelling soap, this one. And then you've got the gorgeous floral soap at the end with this heavenly Ceruti. And I really think that if you like bar soapy style smells, any of these will probably make you really happy. 